everyone, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I worked on last week. As you may notice, I did go and get a haircut. Since I discussed it last week, how was my experience? It was a haircut. Like I said, I'm not a really big fan of going in and getting a haircut. The It's always awkward with that little small talk, so we did small talk okay. It wasn't too bad. I did have to get her to cut it a little bit shorter and the, the length for now is fine. With my hair at about the two or three week mark, that's when, if it's cut right, that's when it's like at its prime. That's when I enjoy it the most. So I get it cut a little shorter and then it just seems to stay at that perfect length for quite a bit longer. The problem is, is I'm not sure if she actually styled my hair or if she just cut it short and just it's like a long buzz cut, you know, it, it'll, it'll do something eventually, hopefully. And if not, I mean, it shows my nice cowlick off there wonderfully. So we'll see. It's just, I'm sorry if you have to look at anything that kind of looks a little bit off, but we'll just ignore the fact that it sticks up a lot and we'll carry on with the crafting. We started the birdie stitch along. This is my first block for March. It's the little birdie with a rainbow. I'm going to change my two and a half inch squares each month to reflect the month. So since this is a rainbow, I went with the rainbow colors. If it were for, if it was green for St. Patrick's Day, even though St. Patrick's Day isn't until next week, I thought I'd just go ahead and pop on a green shirt. I'm not Irish and we don't celebrate. Well, St. Patrick's Day backstory. When I was a younger child and we lived in Connecticut, so it was under the age of 13, my father and two of his super 100% Italian buddies owned a bar restaurant, a Charlie Murphy's. So when it came to St. Patrick's Day, it was a really big thing and it was the corned beef and the potatoes and the carrots and the cabbage and all that. It was, it was booked. You had to get reservations and there was a constant rotation of people. And my job, I had an entire green three-piece suit basically I had a light green shirt with all the ruffles like you'd see with prom I had a type of a vest and I had the jacket and the green pants green socks the whole bit so I was like the maitre d where I, I said hello to everyone greeted them at the door helped them find a seat gave them menus and all of that so St. Patrick's Day has always been a really big thing for us and now when it comes to my immediate family here our biggest thing was are you wearing green? If not, someone's going to pinch you and they're going to pinch you all day long. So we always made sure to wear green because Rob and the kids really enjoyed finding someone to pinch. But this one is a rainbow one because not everyone does St. Patrick's Day. So for March, it's nice to have the rainbow. It represents for me the pot of gold for March. So it has the feel of St. Patrick's Day without it being shoved in your face. During the live on Friday, and I want to thank everybody for hanging out, for those that watch the replay, and for those that just like to listen in the background and not join in on the chat, which is 100% fine because I do that myself. We did the orange line. I did mine in three strands of DMC, but I wanted to go ahead and try the red in four. And I don't know if you can even see it, but for me, I'm looking in at my phone there and I can see while the red is a little bit thicker and more visible, it's only one strand extra, but it feels and looks a little chunky to me. My stitches don't look as smooth. I couldn't get as nice of a line even with the smaller stitches because the thread is taking up more space. Not happy with the French knots or anything like that so I'm gonna leave it in because it's fine. But this is why I usually do a test one first. I did trace out a test one. I just ran out of time because why prepare ahead of time when you know two weeks in advance? Why not just wait till three hours before and start doing it then? Mostly because I was waiting for the fabric to come in and I couldn't decide what I wanted to put around the border. But there's that. I'm going to keep working on that. And just in case you didn't watch or you missed it, I'm going to randomly go live each month to work on this at least once. Maybe more. You never know what we might work on. But I'm going to go live at least once on a non-Friday first and third of the month live. So there will be three lives each month. This one is going to be totally random. It might be in the morning on a Monday. 
It might be in the evening on a Saturday. It might be at noon on a Wednesday. Who knows? Whenever I can fit it into my schedule and I'm in the mood to work on this, I'll go ahead and go live. It could only be 15 minutes or it could be an hour and a half. I don't know. We will go ahead and test it out and see how it feels and change it up each month as we go. But I was thinking to rearrange it and find the time that kind of works for everybody that wants to come and hang out. I also mentioned that you guys can chat about anything. You can ask questions about anything. I'll only be stitching this. If you want to ask questions about stitching, great. I'll answer them to the best of my ability or maybe someone else in the group because there are several people that like to do the hand embroidery. You can ask about zippers, fabric postcards. You can ask about crochet or knitting. It'll be a free for all where you can ask anything you want. I think I will go with the craft and chat. Maybe we'll start numbering craft and chat one, craft and chat two. So you can craft whatever you want and you can chat about whatever you want. Even if you want to talk about folding laundry. FYI, I don't fold most of my laundry. I put my t-shirts on hangers in the closet. That way I can see all of the colors and just choose what I want. And I just fold like my shorts. You don't want to know about the rest. Totally random, but about the laundry, I like to I like to organize my clothes to the point where I have my bras in a stack and you take it from the top. And when you do the laundry, you put the clean ones on the bottom so that I'm always rotating through. And I do the same thing with my panties or underwear. I roll them up in a drawer. See, I told you I wasn't going to tell you and I did anyway. I roll them up in a drawer and I just keep rotating them through because I found in the past that if I do laundry every three or four days, I tend to wear the same items for three or four days. So I'll have a few things that are perfectly brand new and a few things that are basically falling apart and ready to be thrown away. So now I rotate it through and it just seems to wear evenly that way. For March, I did some St. Patrick's Day fabric postcards. I think I made five of these. I only have three left and they are all in the Etsy shop if anyone's interested. I sent out a couple to friends and such. These are just scraps. They were all basically the same. I think one of them had leprechauns with a pot of gold in the center or something like that. That one went out to, I think, a patron. That's who I sent them to a friend and a patron member. So if you're interested, these are in the shop. I also made this fabric postcard for the shop. This was another scrap of fabric that someone sent me. I had this scrap to work with and I had this scrap to work with and then I had this scrap. So actually underneath here, there's a big gap. These are like curtains for the window where they, where they go down and then you can see out the window right there. So this one, I just applique on top. I used some Elmer school glue to hold everything in place and then I just stitched it on the diagonal. Pink thread, of course. The flowers did have their heads chopped off. You'll see what the flowers would look like. I did not chop them off very much. They had already come to me chopped off, but I just love the way these colors are. So it just feels like you're, you're down into the flower garden at the level of the creatures living down there. I think that guy in the bottom is supposed to be a butterfly, but who knows? And whoever he was, he got chopped up too, but it happens. And that's what happens when you're dealing with scraps. You just kind of put them together the best you can. So let's see what it would have looked like. This is the back. So here is one of the big flowers that would have come up here. Again, diagonal quilting. I've switched from the up and down matchstick quilting to the diagonal. I really am, at this moment, I am in love with doing it on the diagonal. I did that for a recent tote. I think I did it for the batik tote. That's also in the Etsy shop. I did it for that one and I just really loved the way it looked. Now here is the cute flower faces. Again, you can see the matchstick on the diagonal. I love that it has the checkerboard looking plaid here with the pinks and then you have the green for the grass and here's the flowers coming up. And again, you're down below at the low, low level. So you're just going to see the little baby flower down there. Pink tassel. This one is in my Etsy shop and I went with a pink lining, of course, because how could I not? This is the favorite thing I made this past week. Well, these are the favorite things I made because this fabric is so adorable. 
If you're going to make one zipper pouch, you need to make more than one. So I pulled out some music notes. I have a little bit of scraps of these, a little bit of leftovers from when someone was making a musical quilt. So I've been trying to use these up in different projects just to just to use them up and get them out of the house. And this guy's green zipper, green tassel and gray zipper, gray tassel and a gray lining. At least I had the word starting with a G. So if you know anyone that's really into music stuff now with this music, Okay, I could not figure out which way the musical notes, which way the sheets of music went. Some of these were really confusing and it's been a long time since I've read music and I know some notes, if I remember correctly, can be upside down. So I couldn't figure out which way they went. So I put some of them sideways so that way I couldn't get it wrong. Now I have no problem with this one. I did it perfectly fine. There is no right side or wrong side. And my only question is I was looking at these and I'm looking at them as coffee beans. But the more I looked at them, then I started to see macarons, macarons. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that it's coffee beans, but you know, I just, I started getting it in my head. And once you get that idea in your head, you're like, is it? Is it not? I listed it in the Etsy shop. All of these are listed in my Etsy shop, of course, because if I make it, that's where it usually ends up. I use the gray zipper, brown tassel, and the gray lining. I've had some questions about what size I make my zipper pouches, and really, I make them based on whatever fabric I have. So this fabric was scraps and it really determines the size. I was hoping for a certain size. I like to, I'm gonna look at my little chart cause I keep it hanging on the wall so I can remember. I like to make this size. When I cut my fabric, I cut it at nine inches wide and five inches high. I like to cut it a little bit larger. So when you do the quilting, if it shrinks it in, this one's done as the quilt as you go style. So I have quilting that goes this way and quilting that goes this way quilting that goes up and down and then some that goes this way and on the back it's the same way there's quilting going in all different directions so that can draw your batting in a little bit and shrink it but it's really not that much so unless I'm making it to fit something specifically like pens or pencils or knitting needles crochet hooks or whatever that's what I start with maybe nine and a half by five and a half and just see where it shrinks these guys ended up being oh well just i think i listed them at eight or eight and a quarter wide and the height is about five inches to the top of the zipper i usually measure to the top of the fabric and not the top of the zipper and even though that's only maybe a quarter of an inch if that i'd rather have the measurements in the etsy shop be a little bit smaller than larger because when you put stuff in there, you're not going to fill it right up to the actual zipper. If you need to, you might put like a notebook or something in there that's going to come pretty close, but it's a little hard to zip it closed if it's all the way up to the top. So I always go a little shy, maybe eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch shy. It all depends. If it's between eight and eight and a quarter, I always list it at eight because I don't do eight and an eighth. That's a little bit much for the average person that does not sew or quilt. So I think that just works out really nicely for them just to have smaller measurements. So all of these, I cut my batting a little bigger, cut my fabric a little bigger and just went from there. So this was my crafty goodness for the week. This is my fabric postcard bin. And before I show you this, I just wanna say one thing to two people out there. I hope you guys are listening. During the live stream, I let my moderators choose the people that were going to win a fabric postcard. I've really been having fun letting the moderators choose in the live stream or just giving them away on the live stream in general. I usually let whatever moderators show up, let them choose someone to give a fabric postcard to. And then I go back a few days later and pick a person that's been watching the replay. But the ones that were chosen on the live stream were Lynn Moon and Sandra Meyer. So I don't know if you heard that your names have been chosen. I'm going to search through and see if I can find some of your older comments so I can comment on them. Otherwise, can you just please send me your mailing address to rsislandcrafts at gmail.com? I'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you. 
So I brought this bin out because this is a new combo bin that I use for my fabric postcards. I had them in different bins and they were in, I think, three or four of them. And it, they were just outgrowing it. Because what I did this week is I opened up a new package of comic book boards. And this is what I use on the back. I like how... If you wanted to, you can set this on a shelf and it would stand up on its own. Now, most of my fabric postcards, I don't consider them art. I mean, yes, they are art, but some of them like the scrappy ones, they're just fun. But maybe you wanna put this out on springtime and you wanna maybe have one of those little, you can have little easels or little cake plates or just lean it up somewhere on a bookshelf and you wanna just display it instead of like hanging it up anywhere. I like that this cardboard allows it to just sit on its own. So if I were using cardstock, it kind of sags a little, and if you use fabric, it kind of bends in on itself. So this way, it's easy to go ahead and put it wherever you want and display it. So I buy the comic book boards. Now a lot of people use these to wrap their fabric around and store it on their shelves. I did that early on, but it was too deep, not, not too deep, but two rows deep on my bookcases and I never saw what was in the back so I only used the fabric that was in the front. So I do have a different way of folding my fabric now. But these are really great if you're going to be doing different smaller amounts. It's really hard to put like four yards or even two yards on these. But that's what these are used for. They're also used to put in the plastic sleeve. Like if you had a comic book, you would put it in the plastic sleeve and that would keep your comic book. That's why these are great for the fabric postcards. It keeps your comic book standing up straight and it doesn't get any creases or folds in it. Protects it from fingerprints and dust. Protects it from creases and folds. And if you put a magazine, you know how it bends and then at the, the stapled, the edge of it, it all kind of gets that crinkle bit on it that creases. I can get two fabric postcards out of one comic book board plus a little leftover. So I cut out 200 for the next round of postcards. I don't plan on making 200, but it's nice to have it all done. I don't just do a few at a time. So when I'm in the mood and I just want to make one fabric postcard out of scraps, I have everything cut out and ready to go. And then I can just go ahead and do it. So there's no stopping and getting the board out and cutting the batting and all of that. I just take an afternoon and I cut whatever I want. So in this purple basket, that's what holds my fabric postcard backings. I do the same thing with my address labels. I've been stamping some of them with my flamingos. I don't want to stamp a lot because I want to be able to send them to people if they purchase, oops, a postcard in my shop so I don't want to put a flamingo on theirs. So I only stamp maybe 10 at a time. While I have a stamp out making cards, I'll stamp a few of these and then it'll be all set. And then this one, which is the same type of basket, just smaller and in a different color, obviously, I keep my little envelopes. And this all sits together nice and neat on one shelf behind me in the shipping department because my shipping department is a three shelf bookcase. And it works out really well for me. So I have everything all set at my fingertips. I can just spin around and grab it. I'm really enjoying having everything right at my fingertips. I received a package of fabric scraps. I don't normally tell you guys about it, except I'll say something like all of these scraps, these scraps, these scraps, these scraps, these scraps, these scraps and these scraps all came from you guys when you sent me a package of scraps, whether it's a small envelope or it's a, a little bit of a small box or something. I received an envelope on Saturday. So I wanted to say that I've decided to make a new challenge for myself. So anytime I receive a package of scraps, whether it's two pieces of fabric, you know, maybe it's just a charm square that someone had a flamingo charm square and they're like, Robin, here, you can have my flamingo. I didn't use it. I have to tell, I, I decided for myself that I have to create something with at least one piece of fabric in that scraps that was sent to me within the next week. I don't normally show the scraps that's coming in. Most people don't want to be shown and they don't want their name mentioned or anything like that. But I just want to show you, since we're talking about scraps, two of the items that were in the package that I thought were super adorable. So these are dogs wearing hats. They have ears and birthday hats. They have, I don't know what half of these hats are called, but like newsboy hats and they're just so cute. 
and I just love this color green. So doing something with this could be as simple as making a zipper pouch. So I think in this size, that should get me enough of the doggies on it and that would be really cute. And then I could play that game like I did with the Elvis items. It's under a quarter yard. So it's eight inches, so eight times, eight times four is 32. You ever start talking and just double check yourself? Yes, eight times four is 32, a yard is 36. So this is just under, so this piece is about eight inches, give or take, it's a little bit uneven at the end. And that's not to say anything bad about it. I will have no problem using that. Even if I were to straighten this up, that would then give me bits and pieces for my scrappy note cards. So nothing's gonna go to waste. I have the salvages. If anyone's curious, what's left on this is canine expressions, hashtag making it fun. But then I also in that, also in that package, there was this little bit left over from one of those like border panels where you have all the great fabric and then across the bottom, it has a giant design of something. At least that's what I'm guessing. But this is the scrap that came. So it's like something in the kitchen. It looks like bottles of uh, gar garlic herbs. So it's like different types of oil. There's some potatoes and onions and, and some thyme and other flowers and maybe some brown lemons. I don't know why they're brown, but whatever. So it has this piece and it has this random bits to it like this. So whoever was using it had a definite plan of what they cut out. They did some fussy cutting and there's a couple of these pieces left. So I'm thinking like, I wonder if I can take this. Thank you, my friend for suggesting it to turn this into some type of a tote bag. I'm guessing this is the edge of the fabric because it's all surged and it has the feel like it's been washed, which is no problem. I don't mind using wash fabric. I just don't want to be the person that's washing it. Look, we have a friend. Hi, Morsey. It's about 930 on Sunday morning and the cats love to lay because this window faces the east. So as the sun's rising and stuff rises in the east, sets in the west, they like to hang out in the sun and get all toasty warm. And their fur gets super warm. She was also looking for a little brunch. But yeah, so there was a couple other little fun things in there, but not all of it has said, Robin, use me like these two hats. So I just thought I'd show you and give you that little idea that I want to give myself a little challenge. You have to make something. Even if I just took this and turned it into a fabric postcard, it's being used. It's coming out of what would now be the stash. It's also a way of honoring the person that sent it to me and to say thank you for thinking of me and sending me your scraps. I am using them. They're not just sitting in a pile somewhere. Most people say use them, give them to friends. If you don't want it, just throw it away. Do whatever you want. I'm done with them. I'm passing them on to you. So some of them I do pass on to my friend because it's, mm, you guys know my style. And while I can work with anything, I really don't want to keep things in the house that are just sitting here not being used. If it's not going to say, oh, Robin, you should make this right away. I don't want to just let it sit on the shelves because then the fabric is not being used and it's just sitting there. If I know that, okay, this is probably going to work for something, I'll go ahead and hold on to it for a little bit. But if I know that I have a friend that could really use this fabric and put it into one of her projects and that it will get used right away, then I think it's great. I'll just send it on to that friend. But just because this is not my style doesn't mean that I can't create something with it. And I think that adds to our challenge also to get a little outside of our box. Of course, I can create anything with something bright and green and quirky with doggies on it. But can I also make something a little bit more, I don't know if the word elegant is the right word, but a little bit more outside of my box, a little bit calmer, some... I just, it's not normally, like I don't work with a lot of browns and I love that it's got the little gold and, and different type of like a, like when the brass gets oxidized and it gets that green colors on it. 
that's what that reminds me of. So there's leaves all around. And I think just the challenge of not only taking something that's in pieces and creating something like I did with the Elvis and like I did with the card because this was in some weird funky pieces. I think it's really fun to do that. And I like how it stretches my mind. So when you guys send me things that you know aren't my style, I don't mind. You guys know I have a friend that enjoys things that's not my style that I share with, but also that it's fun to stretch my creativity. So now speaking of creativity, let me show you some of the creativity that came in the mail this week. The post office decided that Valentine's Day is now in March. So I received my Valentine's Day card just a little bit late and that's fine. It came here, it made it. We really thought, my friend and I thought this was totally lost and it wasn't gonna show up. And I let it go out of my mind because we were waiting for it. I We wanted to do some double checking based on, you know, one post office says you can do one thing and another post office says you can't. And it's it, some of them just make up their own rules and they just decide what's gonna be what. And that, that just drives me crazy. There are certain guaranteed things. And when you go to the post office, a stamp costs a stamp. When you mail something that is just like a letter, you shouldn't have to be charged extra just because someone's a little cranky. So we were waiting because I have a scale and she doesn't and we wanted to wait and see what it weighs. And because she used, I have a, lead, a note on the back so I want to show you, she uses cardstock perfectly fine and it does stand up on its own. So that's not a problem. So those of you who've been asking if cardstock will work, cardstock works wonderfully. There it is on the back. I just like mine to be a little stiffer. I like mine to wear, you know, there, and this one, it still works perfectly fine. I also received this pretty card. So this is a beautiful hexi flower. So maybe you just wanna try making hexes and you decided, oh no, I'm not making any more. Or you made a whole bunch and this one just doesn't work with the rest of them or it's left over from your quilt. You can go ahead and turn it into a fabric postcard. Or hey, just make one and turn it into a fabric postcard anyways because you had fun making it. The fabrics are really a they're just sweet. They're very, I love the blue background and then a pink flower. And then it's more like an oriental in the center. It reminds me of like Japanese flowers with the swirls and the gold and stuff like that. So thank you so much. These are going into my collection. I'm going to point over there that you can't see. I took one of, if you remember, I received that little house mini made out of batik, a little quilted mini. I hooked put that on the wall with some, that Velcro that you can put on. I can't think of the name right now, but you put it on and you know, whatever. So I used that with the Velcro ones and I just nudged it today and it, it came off, it came unhooked. Not the sticky parts, but the Velcro just came disconnected and it fell to the floor. And all I did was just bump it gently. Now right above it, I have another little mini that someone sent me with embroidery on it and I put those tacky things on like you would do for the posters, that little Loctite tacky putty stuff. I put two, I took two pieces and I broke them into so that I have four pieces and I put one in each corner. So they are half the size that they tell you to hang it up because it can hang for a pound and this is nowhere near a pound. And I nudged that one and I I could pull the quilt a little bit off because you know, it's three layers and the, the putty stuff was stuck to the back of the quilt and to the wall. So I could just kind of wiggle it, but it didn't come unstuck. So I am totally sold on that. Where I will put my fabric postcards, if I might just take some of these quilts down from here and hang it up there. The only problem is I would have to move the table every time I wanted to hang them up. So there are some options and who says I have to put them all in the same room, right? I can put them all over the place. There's plenty of space in this area above the bookshelves. It goes, it's really hard to look in the a reverse mirror and reverse picture there, basically a mirror and figure it out. So I have maybe 18 inches above the door and all along above the closet that I'm not gonna show you the closet. You guys have seen it if you've been here for a while, over the door and over all this space and then a little bit over the window. So I can always hang up a bunch there too. There's plenty of places to put them. So I, I'm not worried, I'll just figure it out. And when I change my mind and they're easy to move. So that's wonderful. So thank you so much. Thank you for the amazing scraps.
the fun, quirky, and beautiful. I consider this a little quirky because it's kitty cats with a heart. So thank you so much for my fabric postcards. I will add them to my collection. So your scrappy word for today will be quirky. I think the word quirky, that adjective works really well for me and definitely for my creativity. It can be a little bit quirky and it can be just normal like everybody else's. And I don't think being quirky is bad at all. Just ask these doggies. So if you want to hang out with me for a little bit more, click on this video or this video here. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please click on the little subscribe pink flamingo down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.